so this tutorial will show how to convert any tabular or columnar data sets like, like, that could be shape files or geo packages into com uh, FIBOA compliant geo parquet files. Um, geo parquet is just because we have a FIBOA encoding for geo parquet defined right now. We could in theory in future also have geo package, for example, encoding for a FIBOA. Um, but the main part here is any way to convert the columns and the values to the corresponding specification according to FIBOA. Um, we'll create a custom converter for this um, based on a pre-made template that is shipped with the FIBOA CLI source code. Um, and then we can run it at any time using the FIBOA CLI, so command line interface. And the general high level procedure for this is that you first install the FIBOA CLI from source, then create a data survey if needed, um, because that just helps upfront to identify like how the data set actually looks like and makes it easier to fill the template. And then we copy and fill the template that is in the source code, add missing dependencies, and then publish the converter ideally via PR um, so that everyone can run it. Um, of course, it doesn't necessarily need to be open if your data is closed source, you can not publish it, but um, for the open ones, of course, ideally that would be in the CLI in the end. Um, there is a guide how to create cloud native FIBOA data sets in general that also includes um, additional information like how to publish the data set on source cooperative, for example. Um, that uh, you can also follow. And then there is the script for this tutorial that goes more into detail how to use the CLI and the template. Um, so let's start with a step-by-step -step, um, go through. And in this tutorial, I'll convert the data set that is missing from uh, the FIBOA uh, source cooperative repository which is um, Thuringia in Germany as well, and another German data set that I found that is public. Um, and there is a survey for that already, which you can open and have a look at. So this is, we have like a data survey repository in FIBOA, where you can like submit surveys so that we can look at those and then based on that, make informed decisions on the specification and the extensions that we develop. And for example, here, if you go below, we have the, already the URLs to the uh, to the uh, data files. We, we know like which projection it's in, which license it's uh, using, um, and the fields that are in the shape files are defined here as well. And based on this, we'll now create a conversion tool. Um, exactly. So. Uh, again, as before, you will need to have 533.9 or any later version installed. And you need to have, in this time, not the pip version of the CLI, but the source code version from GitHub. Um, so you would um, clone the GitHub repository, then move, like, move this, your CLI into the uh, folder of the um, CLI, which I'll do now. So we'll... Um, go from where I was into the um, FIBOA CLI repos uh, yeah, repository. Um, and then we can install the source code into an editable development mode, um, which will override our existing installed version so that we can run the changes that we do in the code directly. So that's what I did here with pip install minus e dot. Um, and now I can run um, the local version that I have. And you'll see that um, because before I had 0 0.3.6, now I have 0 0.3.7, which is a development version of the code. So now we'll get to the actual template that I've talked about. And that um, I'll need to open in Visual Studio Code here. Uh, just a second. CLI template. So this um, is how, like, here you see the um, 
the repository, right, before CLI, and then there is um, all the files from the from the repository in here. And in the Bibor underscore CLI, there is a folder data sets, which has a file template pi and the existing converters for the data sets that we've already seen on source cooperative. And if you open the template pi, we see that there is a file that has a lot of comments and a lot of like variables that are um, filled with placeholders. And this is what we want to fill. And that's what we're doing uh, today, pretty much. We'll fill this template and then we can run this. And in the background, it does all the conversions automatically that we define here. So the first step um, is to um, copy this file and then rename it to something sensible. So for example, in this case, I would call it DE for Germany and then TH as a short code for the state, for the federal state, Thuringia. Yeah. Um, and then what this allows us to do is to run this um, using the command um, Biboa convert be underscore th. So if I would run this, um, this um, would run the conversion tool um, and run this specific file that, that converts the data. So um, the first thing um, I just copy in here is R2 converts that you'll need later. Um, that will more makes, make more sense later. And then the first thing to do, of course, is to specify here which is the URI with the data. So we'll just copy that over um, from the data survey that I have open here on my second screen. And then um, that's done. The next parts here are all about metadata. That is more for the collection um, metadata in the end for publishing. So we put the ID here, which is the just like any random ID that you want to use, but I'll just keep it aligned with how they are called here in the, in the files. And then provide a name for or a title for the collection. So field boundaries for Thuringia, Germany. And then from the uh, data survey, I'll also copy a description of the um, of the uh, yeah, collection, right? That's coming from the data provider. That's that. And then the next step, um, after I've indented this all correctly, um, we need a bounding box here. I'll take that from a web page that um, has all the German uh, bounding boxes, copy that in. You might get that from somewhere else um, based on whatever you are converting. Um, we'll provide the provider name here, which in this case is the Thüringer Landesamt für Landwirtschaft und ländlichen Raum. And then the homepage URL where you can find this or where the information about the data set is located. Um, the license says we need to provide attribution, which is in this case just copyright GDI TH. And then Additionally, provide the license information, which in this case is the German license for open data, pretty much. So that's a shortcut here. So this is all about the metadata that we filled um, right now. And now it goes into actually converting the, the actual data. Um, I've just so this is the columns that. Um, is pretty much renaming things. So the the first uh, part here, the keys, are the original names in the files, and the second part here, the values, are the values that we use or, or have defined in Pibor. Right. So if you look at the data survey again, there are all these like mostly German property names here. Um, for example, FBI are the, is the ID, FBI codes is another type of ID, FB Fläche is the area, um, and so on and so on. So um, I prepared a mapping here for us. I'll just copy that over, which is this. 
Now, what you see here, of course, the geometry color is, is staying the same. The name doesn't change. This is a Fibora core field. Then the Bezugs year is pretty much the, the year in which the uh, boundary is valid. So as we don't have a field for that yet in Fibora, I just call it valid year in this case. Um, the FBI is the flick extension again that we um, used already before, which is this like 16 character ID in Germany for field boundaries. Um, and we use this um, for in the flick field. And then the, uh, there is a shorter version of this ID, which we use in the ID field for Fibora. And then the FB Fläche uh, column, we saw that is, is mapping directly to the area. So that's already in Hector. So we just need to rename it. And then there are a couple of other fields that are not defined in Fibora yet that we just like use SAR. Um, bit renaming so that it's consistent in English. Um, but that is open to you. However, you want to call these additional fields, um, you can name them as such. Um, then there is an LF field, which um, we don't include. So I've commented it out because um, in the later step, we will actually filter this data because the field, the, the boundaries that we get from this data set are not just field boundaries, but also things like forests or other um, landscape elements. Um, and once you filter them, all the, like the whole LF column is all, like all values are just LF. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to have in here. So we'll just not include in the map um, so that it gets removed from the actual uh, target or the, like the file that we create. A Couple of other uh, fields that we rename here so that it's English and we can better understand. Um, and then geo update is the actual time when the field was last updated, so last observed. Um, and the, the field name for that in FIBOA is determination date time. So this is just our column mapping. These on the right are the new names that we will have in the, in the file later. Um, as we've already talked about, there is this uh, flick field again, which we have an extension for. So the converter asks us to specify any extension that we are using. So we just copy the extension identifier into here. You can find these identifiers in the extension. So if you go back to the extension, right, there is the flick extension. And the identifier that you need for validation is here in the top. It's called identifier. And then you just copy the URL which in fact is just a link to the actual schema, um, which points to the released version of this uh, schema here, which is a YAML file that describes the fields um, in a, in a uh, yeah, schematic way. Going back to the template. So now we have already um, renamed the fields and specified which extensions we are using. The next thing is of course, that some of the values in the fields may be different to what we want to have. So like, for example, you have an area in square meters defined in your data, but the FIBOA specification says you want to provide it in meters and you need to, of course, uh, recompute the values. And for each of the columns, you can provide a function here that is a Lambda function uh, or can be any other function that does it, right? So for example, here in this example, the square meter, like the area meter field, for example, that is not in this one, but it's just an example. Um, to convert it to hectares, you would pretty much just um, compute or multiply with zero, 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 all these zeros and one, right? So that it's hectares in the end. We don't have this issue with the hectares and meters here, but we have a couple of other fields that are actually, um, different than we want them to be. Um, so I'll copy something prepared as well. So for example, the AFO and the CONT LE fields are encoded in a way that for everything that is like where it's valid, there it is J, that's the, like the one letter for ja or yes in Germany. In, in English, it would probably be Y. Um, but here it's J, but we want to encode that as a true value, as a Boolean true value, and all other values uh, are none in, in the original data set, and we'll encode them as false. So this is a conversion from pretty much J or none to Boolean true or false values. 
Then the other thing that you may want to do here is there is a field that is called Änderung, which is change in, in English. So whether the field has changed since the last iteration, like in Germany, pretty much since last year, whether there was a change in the field boundary. And in the field, there are the values geändert, unverändert, and neu, which translates to changed, unchanged, or new. Um, but string values are often a bit weird, so we translate it as well to a Boolean value, which can also be uh, none. So um, what it says in the end, the, the column is change. So if um, the field has changed, we will set it to true. If it hasn't changed, we set it to false. If it's a new field, well, there is no change as such, so we set it to none. And then there are two other fields here. So the FBI VJ is in the source data set a field that refers to the previous, like to the IDs of the previous years. So how it looks like, and maybe just, um, uh, no, I don't have it here. Um, so it just pretty much has IDs separate with, with a comma. So something like, um, ID one, ID two, ID three, right? Something like that as a string. That's of course not ideal as well. So what we'll do here is we will split the, split the string into an array in the end um, and make that as available as an array rather than as a string that is separated by commas. That's what this code is doing. And then the other thing is that there is a field that has German styled um, uh, dates. So in Germany, we do it like day first, then dot, then month, or the 12, or the, let's say what we want, 12, and then the day, the, the year in, in, in numbers, right? So that's year, a uh, day, month, year. Um, and the default implementation doesn't uh, parse that because it's, well, it's a custom way of encoding dates. So we'll tell them here that this is a date and with, a, with this format, day, month, year, and convert that accordingly um, to a proper date time. Um, and that's it for our column migration. So these will all be translated um, according to the rules that we've defined here. The next step that I've mentioned before is that we need to filter the data because the data is actually having more information than just field boundaries. It also has boundaries for like forests and stuff like that. Um, looking at the uh, at the uh, data survey and the documentation that is linked there, um, this is specified in the field uh, LF or in the, in the column LF. And all well, like all rows that have the value LF in the column LF, that might be a bit confusing, but anyway. Um, so wherever it, the, the value in the column is LF, that is an actual field boundary. So we only want to uh, take that, right? So we specify here, just keep all data that is has a value LF. And then everything else will be filtered out for the column LF. Um, and that's why we don't include the LF in the columns because all the values will be the same afterwards. We don't need a migration. Like if these things that we did before are not like flexible enough to define whatever you need for the conversion, you can just like work on the full view data frame and convert things um, with like normal pandas Python code here. But we don't need this in this case for this uh, conversion. And then the last step is to actually define uh, missing, for mi like for fields that are not defined in FIBOA yet, the schemas for conversion so that it can pick the right data types in GeoParquet, et cetera. Um, this is using the FIBOA schema pretty much. So that is a schema language to define across multiple encodings, for example, for GeoJSON, and it's inspired by GeoJSON, uh, by, by JSON schema, and for um, GeoParquet, how the actual fields look like. We've seen that before in the click extension where we had that as well, this schema YAML file where there is an um, actual schema for the click property. 
So what we do here is to say, first of all, which fields are required, which essentially means which fields are not nullable um, in the encoding later, it's valid year and, and all the, uh, the others. And then we define for each of the field, which type it is and how the, um, how the values look like. For valid year, it's just an in 16, for example. Um, for flick last year, that, that's the identifier that we had before again, we, I, we, we set, right? We, we convert the comma separated values into arrays. So we tell here, this is a um, value that is an array and the items are strings, which is our length 16, which, which we've seen before. Um, we have the area last year defined above that, that is pretty much how the area is defined in PBO as well as a float with minimum value zero and maximum value 100,000. And then a couple of additional values, right? We converted the AFO cond le and change to boolean values that's what we were saying here and b and k which is some kind of um, land cover um, classification we provide a string and tk10 is some kind of internal german uh, area identifier that we also encode as um, string so that's the schema and now we're done that's the whole conversion process we just like specify all these things in the template and now it knows how to convert the data from the original geo package or shape file into a geo parquet that is people are compliant so i'll save this now um, and then for the other parts we don't need to change anything um, and now we should be able to run um, this actually here um, so the, um, as I said before, the command is fibor convert. So we type fibor convert, the ETH is the file that we created. Um, and then there are two parameters that we set in addition. One is minus O, which is the file that we export to. And then minus C is to just like store the file already locally in case you want to run it again during development. So it caches the file locally, saves it so it doesn't need to download all over again if you run it again. Let's run this quickly. So now it starts loading the file from where we said the file is. And then it will start converting in the process. We'll always like um, intermediately write these like excerpts that we've seen before, like five rows or so, so that we see how the file looks in between. Um, so it's now saved it to the local file where it's cached. And then it starts to convert. Now it will take a bit. And then afterwards we have a GeoParquet file. So now it like loaded it into a data frame. That's here an excerpt of the original data, how it looks like. You still, still see all the old column names and the old values that are German names here, unverändert, et cetera. And then it starts to apply filters, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you see here that it has converted already like um, several of the values. Here it's now, now instead of um, unverändert, there is now false, so unchanged false. That's a mapping here. It, it converted the um, dates here. It uh, converted these things also. And then in the last step, it converted also all the uh, columns here to the corresponding names like change, false, et cetera, area, flick. That's the, the names from Fiboa, geometry, determination, day, time. So now we have a DETH parquet file. Um, we can have a look into how it um, uh, looks like with the describe command that we used before, right? So um, this, let's start here. Here is, you see all the collection metadata of Fibor version 02, the <clears throat> extension that we've used, the description, the title is there, license is set, the provider names are set here all. Um, it has a bounding box included, the temporal interval, which was um, uh, extracted from the information inside the file. Um, so obviously here it seems to be that the data starts in 2007 and ends couple of days ago, and the license link is here as well. You see, we see all the information about the schema here and um, excerpts of the data as well. 
right? So this is an easy way to, to run this um, and convert data. You can also validate the data, of course. Um, and with just like, I don't know, what was it, 100 lines of filling things in a template, you get in the end data that is FIBOA compliant and can be published, for example, on source cooperative. Once you're happy with all the things that you did, you can save it, you can uh, um, fork the repository, commit it to GitHub, create a PR, and then um, it can be integrated into the CLI for others to, to be used. That was a lot of talking, but I'm finished now, pretty much at the hour, actually, so as planned. But uh, we can, of course, stay a little longer and uh, if people have time, um, answer questions, etc. Tyler, do you have a question? Yeah, I was curious to see what happens when things go wrong uh, with the conversion, especially like the column migrations, because I figure that when you have hundreds of thousands of records, it's going to be an iterative kind of trying to figure out what the correct migration is to get it to work. Yeah, indeed. So I think I've just seen it somewhere here. It has something actually that was not going wrong. There are probably did something wrong in, in the like script that I did. So here it says something about, I don't know, future warning, or maybe I just installed something recently that like upgraded anything. So here it already gives me some kind of a deprecation warning about some of the migrations that I did, right? So pretty much it just like errors like any other script, right? Because all the like things that are used there are just run in, in Python as well. So whenever something goes wrong, you would see an error message here similar. Like, so you still need to be somewhat confident with what we are doing in the background, right? You still need to understand a bit of code, but at least it does like all the background annoying stuff for you that it writes correctly to GeoJSON, does the metadata correctly, reads the data, gives you a framework for like converting columns easily without like going into the details of like, how do I access this column, et cetera. So that's, it's a, it's a implementation framework pretty much that like should reduce the boilerplate in the background. and. Um, I mean, I, I created, I think, six, like after I've created the framework, I was able to convert these like six different data sets from Germany in like one hour each. Um, so that like would probably take, if you just write it from scratch, it would take hours, I guess, because you need to do all the things yourself. Does it point out like what um, specific row of the data sets you're trying to convert fails? Um... Um... It usually only fails for things that are wrong in columns. So like if the things are wrong there in, in general, um, what you want to do in the end is to check whether they actually the data is correct. So the validate command again with the minus minus data option, and then check whether the, valid, the values that are in there are all correct, um, correctly formatted, et cetera. Any other questions? I guess I'll go for another one. Have you tried this on like the large data sets that are already in source, like Eurocrops? Um, I've not checked this on Eurocrops yet, but most of the data sets that are converted yet were part of Eurocrops. Um, and have other information on top um, because Eurocrops, of course, like just does like geometry, I, I guess, ID and their um, crop classification system. Um, but I've converted, for example, Austria as well, which has like, I think, 2 million rows and that works under a minute. So, um, and, and I mean, this is all, of course, um, work in progress. So if I if we find out at some point it's going getting too slow, we can optimize or so as usual, right? <laughs> Iterate on it and improve it. I was thinking more that uh, one of the easier ways to get somebody to adopt a standard is actually to put some of the big reference data sets in there. So to replace or at least augment what's on source with Eurocrops with this Faboa formatted data. Yeah, that, that is what um, Azu is working on with their data set, right, Jen and or Thea? That's, that's what they're working on. I think they they have a larger like compilation of data that they want to convert 
into FIBOA as well, and Eurocrop is one of them, um, in addition to the German ones that are shown here at these parts of them. Um, like this was pretty much the first iteration to see how it goes. And then the next big step is to like convert this data that they are using that is already compiled into one big chunk, I think, but uh, others can, like this was pretty much the engineering task for me and I did a couple of conversions to test it. <laughs> um, and now the heavy parts are going to be by someone else. But please correct me if I, said something wrong then or whatever. <laughs> Looks like there's a question in the chat cool. um, about the interactions with OGC, CSW, or other metadata catalogs when loading the data. So, I mean, CSW is a metadata, yeah, as it says, is a metadata catalog similar to stack, right? Um, the part where, I mean, FIBOA is not about um, like defining collection metadata as such. It's just like, it, it, it's a real data encoding in the end. Um, and we don't really specify anything about collection metadata apart that um, there is an inclusion of the version of FIBOA and the extensions that it uses. The specification says you could encode in, in stack collection metadata, for example, but you could similarly use other metadata languages to encode this that is just open to uh, you, whatever you, you want, uh, you can use. And then I would say CSW and other metadata catalogs are pretty much the sources where you step into um, the ecosystem and then find the data, right? So FIBOA is more about data encoding rather than metadata encoding in the end. if that makes sense. Okay, any last questions? Otherwise, if there are questions afterwards, we have the uh, the BOA Slack channel on Cloud Native Geospatial Slack. Um, there are, of course, issue trackers, which are um, freely used also to ask questions, not just, just to report issues. Um, so feel free to reach out over the, any of these channels um, or come to the FIBOA calls that we have bi-weekly. And I guess Michelle will send out an email afterwards with all the slides, et cetera. There. Where are the, all the links to the channels, etc.? Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Matthias.